Hey everybody, happy Memorial Day weekend to you. And we're gonna do another fireside chat here, even though there's no fire anywhere. Um, this is probably as much a therapy session for me as is uh, a uh, therapy session for you. But a lot has happened recently. And in fact, uh, between the fact that A, I really have nothing new to say uh, or new to chart this weekend, and B, it's a three day weekend, which is not my favorite thing. I might just make this a two-parter. Um, I've got some notes about some things I want to say, but um, I think there's enough to say that I'll just break it into two parts to fill some content and also just to try to um, be complete about the things I have to to uh, to chat about. Um, it's coming up on the end of the fifth month of this year, and it might be a decent time to reflect upon 2022. It's been a very interesting trading year so far. And um, I guess I'll start with a little anecdote to um, kind of capture part of what this year has been like um, and why it's important to keep perspective. So the year began and uh, January 3rd was the first trading day of the year. And uh, on that day, I had said that it was my belief that uh, Tesla had peaked. Um, and although I didn't announce it on slope because it's really not germane to slope, um, I had advised my beloved son who had a significant uh, amount of Tesla stock to get out of it. And we got out of it. Um, around the time that I'd made the remark, uh, one former five-star sloper um, really just said, Tim doesn't know what he's doing. And, um, and he, you know, said it at greater length than that. But, you know, it's my website and have somebody come along and uh, denigrate my life's work on my own site doesn't sit well with me. So um, I rarely block people. I mean, in a given year, it's in the low single digits. But he was out. Uh, and a lot of people were wondering, hey, what happened to the guy? because he had been around for eons. But I just really took great offense at that. And particularly, it kind of stung because, I, you know, the next day, January 4, you know, Tesla marched higher and it, it sort of tore at my heart because thinking, have I done my, you know, I started to doubt myself, have I done my son a disservice here? You know, um, is Tesla just going to keep marching higher to, to Kathy Wood's target of, I think, $4,600 a share? Literally, that's her target. So I began to feel bad as a father and as a chartist and the whole schmear. As we look back, we know that January 4 was actually the top. And uh, the Tesla stock that I dumped uh, in behalf of my son, uh, that turned out to be a very big savings in terms of profits that would have been foregone. Uh, very significant amount of money. And I feel better as a father for getting the hell out of there. Um, and I don't feel so bad about my judgment call at the time and the clown who was denigrating my, my uh, charting skills. Uh, I feel vindicated on that. But I don't, th I don't share that as a told you so. And I don't even share that as a what happened to that guy for the handful of you who are wondering. Uh, I share it to only say that in the moment that things seem to be going poorly, it can feel bad. But if the fundamental logic and rationale and good sensibility are intact, you've at least got that. You may not be right, but you're trying your best to be right with the skills that you've got, which is what I all I try to do. Um, and we've seen that play out. Um, you know, I wanted to be very clear, and I always want to be clear that there's nothing for me to gain by convincing you of something that I want to happen that doesn't happen. Um, if I, you know, there, there's, there's no ulterior motive for me to pound the table and say, the market's going to go down, the market's going to go down, the market's going to go down. Because no matter how much I say it, A, it won't make the market go down. And B, whether I'm right or wrong, and whether you lose or profit, um, it doesn't affect me directly. Only in as much as if I'm like uh, 
saying ridiculous things all the time and, and like completely Dennis Gartman, um, then one by one subscribers will be like, well, forget this guy. Um, so I don't have an ax to grind in terms of trying to, to seduce you into believing the market's going to go down. Um, it is just what I believe. And the fact is that we have in this year had a more sustained um, drop in the market than we've seen um, since the, the Great Recession. So, you know, this is the, the best uh, drubbing the market's gotten in all those years. I suppose late in 2018, there was a, a little while that it fell nicely. And of course, the COVID crash, but that was only like not even two weeks. So this has been actually, I think, a good start. Um, but um, we've got these counter trend rallies going. And that is what mainly prompted me to, uh, to do this video or these videos. If I make it two parts, I probably will. Um, and I'll probably just end this part with a, a little chat about um, those counter trend rallies. The market did peak on January 4. And we have had three big, nasty, ugly counter trend rallies in that time. The most recent, which we are experiencing right now. Um, I'm recording this. You're probably going to watch this like on Saturday. I'm recording this on Friday night, um, the 27th of May. Last Friday, just a week ago, intraday, it really looked like things were starting to cook. Uh, we were plunging into new lows for the year and we were getting some really serious breakdowns going. And, uh, you know, even though I talk about fed this and fed that, I, I, there's really not a conspiratorial bone in my body, almost to the point that people might think I'm naive. You know, I don't believe in a JFK assassination conspiracy. I don't believe the World Economic Council is running everything and Joe Biden's a puppet. Uh, I don't believe... You know, the school shootings are a setup from some evil force trying to kill the Second Amendment, all that stuff. I think I'm, I'm sort of like, uh, I tend to take things at face value. So think of me as naive, if you like. Uh, having said that, um, I do believe that uh, it is no accident that when last Friday things really started breaking down, lo and behold, the market started getting bit up again. Because... Um, you know, the Federal Reserve has this astonishingly huge vested interest in keeping things propped up. They, you know, it would be very bad if assets went all the hell on them. And uh, so if you're going to call that a conspiracy, do so. But um, I do believe that uh, there is some form or another of a buy button out there that they're trying to counteract uh, these sell-offs. And it was big and lasted a solid week. Um but I, I want to be clear, and I'll continue about this tomorrow on the next part of this, about the nature of these counter turn rallies and why, um, frankly, why I stuck around and, um, you know, didn't close all my puts a week ago when I, you know, should have, in quotes. So I'll end it there. Um, a little cliffhanger, although not much of a cliffhanger. Um, I at least wanted to get across some of what I'm thinking of the year so far, my view that this is simply the third, uh, and it won't be the last, kind of rally in the midst of a bear market. Um, and I'll have more to say tomorrow. So I'll see you then.